nature is gonna help. We can be the Lord's gonna feed us, man. Right. And we going and we're not gonna be out freezing if it's the winter time. Because Yahweh shall pray, pray ye not that your that your right. flight. What flight is he talking about? Jacob's trouble. Yeah. Let your flight be not in the Sabbath, need nor in the winter. We know it is in the winter time, man. Okay, but we observe these things. We observe the animals. We, we observe the birds, and the Lord fed, fed them. And we're the back, princes. Like, which back then he was, he was specifically referring to uh, 78, 78. 80. 80. That's right. Yep. You know, just yep. to clarify that. That's but right. we understand things are reincarnated, and events that took place back then will reoccur. But it will be worse in this time. You know what I'm saying? Because how many Israelites keep it a Sabbath, really? That's right, how brother. How many Israelites even exactly. know when the Sabbath falls? That's right, brother. Who's really going to think about the Sabbath when it's with all hell breaking loose, exactly. realistically speaking? That's right. You know what I'm saying? So that was definitely a different time period. Yeah. You know, this time, see, this is different because the Lord sent the plead to the mountains and all that. And this this time around, there's no way to run. Right. What right. mountain? What, fuck, what fucking mountain? Right. Show me a mountain in New York. You know? Yeah. How many jakes know how to get to a mountain? Exactly. Without without driving it, you know. Right, right, I mean, right, Jake's right, know how to right, discern right. where's the east, north, south, and west, and all that, man. So you know, that that was for that time, as we know. You know, what I'm saying just clarifying that. But this time we gonna need. That's why Daniel from what? The only instruction we we awaiting is to wait and he upon me till the day I rise up to the cloud. That's the only instruction Yahweh told us to follow, man. To wait on him, all right? Because that we know at that time Michael's gonna stand up. Great Prince was standing for the children of our people, so we're gonna be protected, man. Right yeah. Yeah. You know, scripture say also in that um in Luke about the women. Woe to them that always suck. But that's back then because them kids got read about it. They ate their kids. They ate their children back then. Not all of them, but the majority of them that stayed in um Masada, you know, they built that fortress and they thought, you know, they would wish they could wait it out, whatever the case may be. They all died out there, man. Esau seized them. All right, just like how we about to seize Jake out here now. Now spiritually, we praying that the Lord, like like how the Lord told um, Israel what to do back then. Mm -hmm. We doing that spiritually. Spiritually, we're preparing ourselves. Like He said, He that is on the housetop, let him not go back. You know, and things of that nature. We are spiritually preparing for this siege that's about to take place. How do we do it? Not physically, but spiritually. Can you do physical things to? Possibly help your situation? Sure you can. But there's no guarantee that you would even be in a situation to, to be helped with the things you provided for yourself. Such as food, extra food, canned foods, water, water supplies, a generator, gasoline, whatever, solar power energy. We're not relying on that, man. Matter of fact, that's all cargo shit. Yeah. I mean it's not it's not a sin to have it, but it's all cargo. See when that time comes. We we put we we got ourselves in a position to where the only defense we have will be faith and That's spiritual right, power. That's right, brother. So we don't got guns, we don't got weapons, we don't got this, we don't got that. The the last thing we got to depend on is gonna be faith, bro. That's right, brother. You know now somebody that's carnal, like you know, which if your state allows you to have weapons, by all means, that's your business. But guys that are promoting getting you getting yourself guns and do this shooting range or whatever, whatever, their first line of defense when she hit the fan. We'll be grabbing their gun. Exactly. I, I promise you that. Exactly. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Any nigga you know that ever had a gun, got a gun, whatever gun, first thing they, that, a, a, a loud stomp, fucking gun, under the pillow. You know what I'm saying? Grab, the, you know, yep. I'm telling you, bro, that's how it is. That's gonna be the first That's thing. niggas first instant. Why you think they get a gun? Yeah. So when you don't got it, what you gonna do now? What you gonna do now? You got it, Lord, how about you, man, what do I do next? That's right. Wait for that spiritual power, man. Yeah. That's right, bro. Remember that? Well, you know, go ahead. Remember that kind of first um, kings of Elijah when the Lord had him go to that woman that had the son. Uh -huh. He had the barrel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah, the Lord yeah, yeah. pretty much had him multiply yep. to help to sustain him. It was oh, never ending. Right. It was never ending. Right. 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 In other words, like never ending. Uh, what, was it? what was it? Grain or something? Yeah, it was yeah. grain. Yeah. Rice or grain or something. It was, yeah. it was never ending. It was so, a famine. That yeah, it was a famine too. And That's it was Elisha, right? Elisha. Oh, Elijah. It was Elijah. Oh, yeah, it was Elijah. It was never ending, man. So. Just like that, bro. The Lord will tell you. Lord, you may. Lord may tell you one morning. We in the midst of Christ. I thought about this before. You know, Lord's will it happen? Because I thought about it. Lord, through faith, I thought about it. Right. Mm -hmm. The Lord tell you. You know, go upstairs, put a pot on the stove, an empty pot on the stove, cover it up, 
and pray, say the Lord's Prayer in the Hebrew. Mm. And then open the pot. Then you got some food right there. Yeah. You, know? Yeah. you know, you got some food right there, you know? Yeah. 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 Empty pot, then, uh, you know, you say, but then you, yeah. the Lord provides you a meal. Why? Because he wanted to be dramatic like that, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see that, too. I can see that. When you can see when you see it, I can visualize it. I did visualize it when you said it. I literally visualized it with the four, with the four, and then you went like, and you open it up, and you open it up. And you know how much that's going to boost your food, bro? It's like, oh, Yo, that's gonna boost your, your bro. That's gonna boost yeah, your That's how the Lord did miracles, man. Right. You know what I mean, bro? Yeah, I'm gonna go positive. You open up, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Oh, and then now, you know, you Jake wanna, Jake wanna go all out. Oh, shit. Yo, baby, get the rest of the pot. <laughs> <laughs> get the rest of the pot. Hey, bring the microwave, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's all right. Come on. Come on. Yeah, go yeah man, what it. we talk about is, we talking about how real it's gonna get and how real your faith is gonna have to be in those times, bro. Oh, solid. Solid, right, brother? Solid. The water you have about you now, Shai, may he fortify us and strengthen us and just and give us that relentless spirit to just forge forward, man, whatever we got to go through. May he get us through it so that we can, Lord willing, if it be his will, be beamed up and see the, see the salvation that we've been, we've been craving Oh, so earnestly for. That's right. All right? Because we want to be delivered, man. The fuck, the hell with goddamn America. The hell with Esau, Edom. The hell with two-thirds. We want to be delivered, yeah, man. Real, we not in this truth, all right, just to be goddamn uh, 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 jakes that was just out here speaking the words of the Bible, man. We we, we, wanna, we want Yahweh Bashir Hashai to manifest his power among yeah, us, man. man. Upon us, man. All right? Yep. That's right. That's why we in this thing. We in this thing for salvation. God. And if you ain't in this truth for salvation, you all and the Lord going to destroy you, man. Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises on and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakaq, Wadash. All blessings, honor, glory, and power will be unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh Shai. And double honors to the apostles and the other bishops, the great millstone who taught me the truth. And salutation to the elect scattered brought throughout the four corners of the earth. All right, my name is Amon Gabar. Now back with another lesson, Lord Williams, edifying straight into the point. And um, in the beginning of this video, as you've seen, I played um, a clip it from last week's camp, which last week's camp and all camp videos are going to be on Odyssey. I'll post the link in the description box. So as much as I mentioned, I'm going to try to always try to include the, the camp pages in the description box whenever I mention on video, but you know, how we gonna eat, right? You know, it's just a topic, I mean, or, or a title for this, for this lesson, but how we gonna eat when all hell break loose? How we gonna eat during the time of the famine? How we gonna eat when SHTF? How we gonna do this? How we gonna do that? Hey, we got the scriptures. We, matter of fact, let me start it up with this. We got the scriptures, all right? We got the scriptures to show us as a guidance for what things are going to look like and how things are going to be. All right. And what to look forward to. This is Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things are written aforetime, we're written for our learning. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. All right. So, Lord willing, I'm going to bring out a couple of scriptures and I want to give an example, a real, um, like a perfect example, you know, on how we going to eat. You know, not, not more so how, but how according to the miracles that the Lord is going to provide for us in these days. Because here it is, we're entering into 2023. And the way things are looking, all hell could possibly break loose in 2023. We don't know yet. But the way things are looking, um, they're, Lord will not, I want to do a couple more shows, a couple more videos, if the spirit permits today, um, on a few things that I've noticed. You know, they are they are ramping up the whole, the whole, I guess I could say, um, for lack of a better term, propaganda or scare on this new, Thing that's hitting right now, right now, uh, Wuhan, and, and I don't want to say too much, but just you know what I'm getting at. Wuhan is on some SHRT right now, you know, and they saying, are we to be alerted? Are we to be frightened? Are we to be scared? Blah blah blah, whatever. And not to not to mention, not too long ago I did the video on Odyssey, all right, uh, concerning a particular exercise that they carried out or a simulation of an exercise that they carried out which is a lot similar in common to what they did in 2019. You know, and then on top of that, you got the CBDC, which is all being set up, all right, which is all being set up. And 
ultimately, like we've been saying, here at Great Millstone from the Apostles or them, that that whole CBDC thing is going to lead to one thing and one major thing, all right, which we've been teaching through the Spirit. And, hey, everybody's going to realize that there's been a prophet among them. And that's not to say bragging or boasting or nothing, but just teaching the words of Yahweh by Shemir al and doing that the Lord commanded. That's all we're doing. Let, the, let, let every word of the Most High be true and every man alive. So all we're doing is what the Heavenly Father commanded us to do, which is to teach the word. All right, so SHTF real soon, Lord willing, 2023. You know, how we going to eat? How is it, how is it going to be? We got we just got to wait and find out. That's why the scriptures say thing written four time or written for our learning. And I gave that example in the clip in the beginning. You know, I always think about this, man. Maybe I, I hope I'm part of the elect. You know, maybe it may happen one day. You know, I, I just hope, like all heaven, that I'm part of the elect. And then, you know, in the time of famine, the Lord could do it like that. You know, tell you to go in your kitchen, your pantry, your, your, your cabinet drawers and pull out, put a pot on the stove or just take it out, cover it up, say the name of the, you know, the Lord's Prayer or just pray to the Lord, say it in Hebrew or whatever, however the, the, the Holy Spirit may instruct you to do. And then you lift the lid off the pot and you got a whole meal right there. I mean, that's the level of faith it's going to take in order to believe that the Lord is going to provide for us because there's only but so much we can do. You know, there's only so much preparations we can do as mere mortal, as man. Really, we, really is all, all, all in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. I mean, we can't do Jack SHIT to really, you know, get out of what's about to come, but have faith. So, anyway, um, I just want to open up with that scripture. And what I'll do, I don't have this in any particular order, but let me let me do this. I'm actually going to get the example first. All right, when you when you read about when Elijah the prophet. In uh, 1 Kings 17, when he, you know, when he, when he, when, when he was mentioned on the scene, right? It tells you this. I'll read through it. It says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord, power of Israel, liveth before whom I stand, there shall, excuse me, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. So Elijah prophesied that there were, there was going to be a famine. Just like we are prophesying through the Spirit that there is going to be a famine. All right, but what happened? It says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Chereth. Um, that is before Jordan. So the Spirit of the Lord told um, Elijah the prophet what to do and where to go. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. All right, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Chereth. That is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. So the ravens, the Lord provided by setting up, setting up the fowls of the heaven to bring him bread. All right. To bring him meat. Okay. So Elijah ate. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. So now the brook dried up. So just look at it like he's being instructed where to go through the Holy Spirit. Just like how we got to expect these miracles to, to instruct us. You know, the Holy Spirit. Be a Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to instruct us where we going to go, what to do, you know, how to do it. You know, we just got to believe. You know, like the scriptures say in the Apocrypha that even in those days, we're going to be as pilgrims. All right, pilgrim is, one, pil pilgrim is one that travels. All right, but when you look up the word, when you go to the etymology, it, all, it, it goes a little deeper. It says one that travels seeking miracles. A, a person that travels seeking miracles because you just don't pilgrim you know, nomad yourself away around going nowhere. And these days we're going to be as pilgrims seeking miracles, moving around, but seeking miracles at the same time. All right. So you could go look up the word uh, pilgrim in the etymology online. So verse seven says, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, but there had been no rain in the land. So now the, now the brook is dried up and the word of the Lord came unto him saying, arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon. And dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So the Lord set him up to where he was going to go and be sustained by this widow woman. So let's read on. So he arose and went to Zaraf Zarafath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow wo woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as he was going to fetch, as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. 
So he asked for bread and water. And she said, as the Lord power, as the Lord thy power liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. So she is saying how she only got but so little that could only sustain for her and her son. All right, not even enough to hold him down, but enough just to get by before they, you know, before they die of starvation. That's what she's thinking. And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, and make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord, power of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. All right. And what did it, what is Elijah saying? Thus saith the word, Yahweh, Shem, Yahweh, Shah. All right. The meal, the little that she have in the barrel is not going to waste. Neither the cruise of oil is going to fail until the day that the Lord reversed the famine. All right. And that, that, that's exactly what happened. So it says, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. All right, and that's the point of the famine part. All right, so the barrel of, of um, meal, the grain or whatever it was they had, it didn't, it didn't waste. So it was like a never-ending supply in that barrel. The Lord performed a miracle to where no matter how much they dipped out, it replenished itself. No matter how much oil they poured out of the, uh, the cruise or the vessel, it replenished itself. Okay? The water, it replenished itself. So they always, they have food, as the scriptures say, until the days, matter of fact, where is that again? Um, until the days that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. All right, so we're going to be in a famish, or not we, but when I say we, this world's going to be in a famish-like state. All right? This is it. You know, this is it. We're approaching the end times. These are the things that Yahweh Shah said was going to happen before he come back. And this is going to be irreversible. Now, they're going to try to swoop in and try to save the day via that MOTB. Somehow, somewhere, that's going to be the thing to reverse the hell that's been that's been um, taking place. Because Babylon is like somebody that's been taking a punch, taking hits, taking punch, low blows, punches, you know. But now we're just waiting to see the effect of all them punches and the hits that Babylon has been taking. We about to see the swollen faces, the swollen jaw, broken nose, bro uh, black eyes, you know, liver shots. You know, the world is still taking blows, but the world ain't see the effect of Babylon getting its ass whooped by the Lord yet, man. You know, and Lord one, I believe 20, a lot of brothers, we believe that, man. 2023 may be the year that the Lord get ready to crumble this place. You know, Lord willing, we hope so. Okay, this thing can only uphold itself but for so long. You know, there's got to be something that's going, like the straw that broke the camel's back. There's going to be something. That's going to break this camel's back called Babylon. But the Lord is going to take care of his men. And I read this example in the book of uh, 1 Kings 17 with Elijah the prophet. All right. He prophesied it. It happened. But the Lord sustained him. Now, what I want to do now is go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 4. And um, and I'll start at... um. I'll, start, I'll go to the point. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, which is Elijah. Many widows were, were in the days of Elijah the prophet, right? In the days of Elijah. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city in Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And we just read about that woman, all right? And that, that, I read this and I thought a few things, man. That there's going to be a lot many more of them that perish That are going to be saved Okay Because here it is Matter of fact you can read in the Apocrypha Where it tells you Women are going to be as widows Meaning a lot of men are going to lose their lives So whatever happened Or whatever happens in the near future Everything is going to come right back Make a full circle There's going to be a lot of widows out there Matter of fact When you read in the, um, the commentary um, I remember the Apostle Tari did it and um, he had did the commentary concerning um, Isaiah the fourth chapter, verse one, where it says that there's going to be a scarcity of men. All right, there's going to be a scarcity of men 
that women are gonna um I forget how the commentary said it. But one of the Edomites was breaking down the commentary. It's gonna be a scarcity because of the anarchy and the chaos and a lot of and the scarcity of men that women are gonna cleave or look for men. You know, somewhere along those lines. But is that gonna happen? What we reading about in Luke the fourth chapter, verse 25, again, it is gonna happen again. All right, and it's gonna be called a famine, and a lot of people are gonna die. The Lord is only gonna sustain his chosen, the elect. All right, which the elect consists of the one third. All right, within that one third, you got the 144,000. All right, which, which is here in Babylon when you read Zechariah the 13th chapter. Okay, so that includes the men, the women, and the children, those that are destined to be saved. You know, but for the majority of men are gonna die. All right, a lot of men are gonna die. A lot of women are gonna be, become widows because of the loss of their husbands. A lot of women are gonna die. All right, you gotta think famine um, on top of um, on top of pestilence. Imagine fam imagine starving and being sick with a disease because that's what's coming to Babylon. Starvation and diseases is coming to Babylon, you know? So, hey, now it's time to get your mind right. Now, I mean, it's always been time to get your mind right, but lock in, lock in because we about to see some shit real soon, you know? So anyway, again, it says, but I tell you of the truth, many widows were in, the, were in Israel in the days of Elias. And you got the story in um, 2 Kings, um, about I think it's the 16th chapter with the uh, about the famine in Samaria, and then they give you the example about the two women. For all we know, their husbands was probably dead. You know, for all we know, their husbands was probably dead. You know, I mean, if you just extrapolate, you know, because it was two women arguing over who gonna eat whose child first. You know, we all know the story. One woman said we gonna eat our child today, and tomorrow we gonna eat yours, and they agreed on it. So when the next day came after they ate the one woman's child, the, the next woman whose turn it was, hit her child, and then it was a whole argument over that. Those days are coming back, all right? And that's gonna to happen to the wicked among Israel. That's not for the righteous, that's for the wicked. For the wicked women out there, that's what they're gonna to have to deal with, okay? The women that sincerely fear this truth, fear Yahweh Bashem Yahushah, they're doing what they're supposed to do, following the, the, the orders, the law, statute, commandment, and just staying in order, that ain't gonna to happen to people like that, man, you know? So again, get your mind right, because it's going to get like that. It says, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land, but unto none of them was Elias sent. So the Lord found favor in that woman, you know, to an extent, you know, to have her, Elijah the prophet go to her, you know, it could work both ways. A lot of people encounter the prophets to get marked. A lot of people encounter the prophets to believe. And then she did believe at the end, but it took for her, um, for her son to pass away and then elijah prayed to the lord to raise up her son and then her son came back to life and she said now i believe thou art truly a man of the lord so i mean for some people seeing is believing but even when some people see they still not gonna believe and how, how do we know this because look at the whole exodus out of egypt israelites seen the miracles and the, the great miracles of yahweh and they still didn't believe they still were all uh, faithless you know they got to the they got to the sea and then they, they lost faith they was like we should have just died in egypt you know, it's going to be Israelites that are going to be on that tip to this day. The ones that that didn't want the Roman Empire to go down, the Greek, the Greek Empire, and all, all these different captivities. They're all here again today to, to face slaughter in this captivity. All right? So, um, but unto none of them was Elias sent save unto Serpta, the city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. So, you know, she ate. That woman ate. Elijah ate. You know, Elijah ate first and foremost, and she, she ate too. You can only imagine what, what happened to the other women in the family, right? So, let me see. Like I said, these are in no order. So, I'm just going to get whatever, whatever the Spirit allows first. So, this is Isaiah 65 and 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I call, ye did not answer. Which is tying right into um, Proverbs, the first chapter. When I call, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear. But did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that where I delighted not. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh: Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. And it's going to come a point where things are going to look extremely dire, crucial, you know, like impossible. But there's nothing impo impossible with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Now, all this teaching and preaching, and those that have been hearing and applying, we're approaching a time where all of this that we've been gathering is going to be put to the test. You know, and I say that all the time to myself, 
that everything we've been learning and, and building ourselves up in the spirit is all going to be put to the test real soon. You know? So the servants are going to eat. All right? But he shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but he shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but he shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but he shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. All right? So the, the prophets, the servants, those that truly believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to be is going to be good. Going to be taken care of. When things are looking real straight, S-T-R-A-I-T. Brothers, brothers and you sisters, you few sincere sisters out there and our children will all be taken care of, you know, through faith. This is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 3. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. All right. And what we're about to see is the substance of the wicked all be cast away. The substance of a Babylon the great. Everything that America once was is all dwindling. Everything America, Babylon the great once was is all dwindling. Right before our eyes, all right. The the main the thing that upheld this economy, the the, the um this country, the economy, the finances, and the 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 glamour and glitz, the tourist attractions, whatever. All these things are all dwindling. So we are about to see the hiccup of everything that ever happened, you know, since 2020 began, or since 2019 ended. You know, things are gonna get drastic. So, again, the Lord will not suffer the souls of the righteous to famish. And we got to believe that, that the Lord will not allow those men that have been sincerely pushing the word, you know, in the corners, giving diligence to make their call and election sure, you know, praying without ceasing. We got to have faith, man. The scriptures say that he that uh, served the Lord must believe that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him, you know? So we got to believe. This is Job 5 and 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yet in seven there shall no evil touch thee. The sixth trouble is the J Jacob's trouble, all right? The time that we're entering into, you know? Those are the sixth trouble. That's the sixth trumpet. That's when SHTF scenarios and chaos, January 1st, you know, they talking about, remember the whole uh, Illinois, uh, New Jersey, you know, cops lightening up. Brother did, um, who, I forget who did the video, but brother did a video with, I think it was Chicago. Brother in Chicago did the video about how a woman had a 911 call and the 911 was like, there's nothing we could do. Even though this would have been the call that Favo, that Popo would have responded to instantly. But nothing happened. They ain't do nothing. They said, listen, there's nothing we could really do. Just hang on tight. Well, that's gonna be the that's gonna be the end, the, the new voicemail messaging system for you, for you people that's gonna call cops. You know, mainly the women's gonna be hang tight. Just hang tight. That's what that's all it's gonna say. Just hang tight. And you're gonna be listening to some elevated music while your murder, your 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 your, your act, the ex psycho killer boy ex boyfriend is there trying to get at you. You know, it's just gonna get real bugged out and weird out here, man, to say the least. All right. So he shall deliver thee in six trouble, yeah, in seven. This shall no evil touch thee. Seven, seven talk about the the nukes, the final, the last trumpet. All right, that's Psalms ninety one. In famine he shall redeem thee from death. All right, de famine, death is not going to have victory or be able to prevail over those that fear the Lord, the righteous. And in war, from the power of the sword, that's World War III. All right, showing you that before World War III, there's got to be a time of trouble. All right, so this, this cut the whole madness about there wasn't going to be no time of Jacob's trouble and all of that. All right, there's going to be famine, hell, calamity, uproars of the people, uh, food shortages, people invading one another. It all sound like it all sound like just words coming out of our mouths, right? Until they actually start happening, until these words become your nightmare, because these words are about to become people's nightmare. It's gonna get real. It's gonna get real scary out here in Babylon, man. All right, scary for these people, exciting, exciting for the elect. You know, these are the days that we say, yo, I can't, we can't wait. When we say, I can't wait for the Lord to f this place up, these are the days that we're talking about. So people gonna get spooked up out here, man. All right, so it says, verse 21, Thou shalt be hid from the scourges of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Matter of fact, Job 5 and 22. Let me see something right quick. All right, Job 5 and 22. I want to see how the NLT phrases that. 
It says, you will laugh at destruction and famine while animals will not terrify you. Uh, it's pretty much the same. All right. But anyway, at destruction and famine, you will laugh. We will laugh. Thou shalt laugh. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Those are some of the some of the beasts of the earth or the, the, the teeth, the wild beasts created for vengeance that the Lord is going to send. All right. Um, let me see. Where am I? Let me go to Lamentations 4 and 9. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. These pine away, stricken through want. All right, through for want of the fruits of the field. So they that be slain with the sword, because remember, it's going to be sword in people's hands, killing one another, invading one another. All right, though that be slain with the sword, the gun, all right, are better than those that are going to die by hunger. Some people are just going to die by hunger. All right, but not the elect. We read a couple scriptures, a few scriptures, Pride it is that the Lord is not going to allow the elect, his chosen, to be touched with that famine, which is a spirit created for vengeance. All right? A famine is a spirit created for vengeance, and the Lord is not going to allow his righteous to get touched by that. So we got to believe. I mean, however you believe, you know, your level of faith is how the Lord is going to reward you. You know, that's how the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, our power, is going to reward you. You know, it, like the, the example I gave earlier with the whole pot. I mean, that's similar to um, Elijah's story, almost, you know? The the barrel of meal that didn't waste away, it just kept replenishing and replenishing and replenishing. The Lord could hold you down like that until he tell you to go to the next spot, you know? Or something happened. We don't know. You just got to believe. You just got to have faith. You know, so those that are going to be slain with the sword are better than those that are going to be slain with hunger. All right? Because the, one that, the ones that are going to be slain with hunger, they pine away, meaning they waste away. Stricken for the want of the fruits of the field. All right? They're going to be wasted away. Their body is a whole process on how people starve to death, which is a very intense and cruel way to go. All right? An unbearable pain. You know, a lot, and that's a scary thing. You know, thinking about it, a lot of people are going to, you know, probably hold off. You know, hey, think about it. A lot of people might try to hold off from receiving the, the MOTB till they can't take it no more. You know, and they said, man, listen, I got to eat. I remember, uh, what was his name, Yohanna said, listen, man, if you got to eat, you got to eat or something like that. You know what I mean? So you're going to have people like that, man. That's why the Lord is saying Revelation, the third chapter, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So no matter how this thing go, we just got to, you know, one way it out and just have faith and trust in the Lord. It says the hands of the pitiful woman have sodden their own children, meaning they, they prepared their own children for food, for meat. You know, sodden them up, dress them up, season them, you know, put them in a pot, boil them. It says they were their meat, their food in the time of the destruction of the daughter of my people. You see, so that's all coming back. That's all coming back. All right. Let me go from there to um, Ecclesiastes chapter 40. And I'll start at verse 8. It says, such things happen unto all flesh, both man and beast, and that is sevenfold upon sinners. So this thing that happens to all flesh, all right, happens to all, happen to man, beast, all flesh, but sevenfold upon sinners. Death, bloodshed, strife, sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and scourges. So the sinners are going to feel the worst of this thing. They're not going to be shielded from the destruction. They're not going to be held down mentally and uh, uh, spiritually when the Lord is ready to send that wrath. Like I like can tell you in Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy terms. All right. These sin the sinners, the, those, the wicked amongst Israel, all right, two thirds, they're not going to know what the hell to do. You know, that's why the Lord is going to spiritually darken this place. The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of his world is going to be blotted out. People are going to flock to Esau for that answer, for that fix. Okay? Or to Abkeo. Or to uh, Chaos. So, you know, hey, the Lord is with it, though. So it says, these, th these things are created for the wicked. And for the sakes, and for their sakes, came the flood. So just like how the earth was flooded, or why the earth was flooded, was to, to destroy and wipe out the wicked. The Lord is going to do the same thing. A real, true ethnic cleansing is coming. All right, a real true ethnic cleansing is coming and the Lord is about to do it. You know, Lord willing 2023 can will be that year. We just got to wait and see. All right. 
So let me go from there. Got a couple more and I'm going to end it. This is um, Ecclesiastes 39. I quoted this. All right. For, uh, let me start. 39.25. For the good are good things created from the beginning. So evil things for sinners. So good things are created for the, for the good since the beginning. And evil things are created for sinners from the beginning. All right. So we're about to see some of the evil things that are about to take place. All right. Let me jump down to 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of their destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. All right? The spirits that are created for vengeance, we about to see them. You know, even, even um, like I tell you in the book of Romans, that he bare not the sword in vain. Well, even Esau, he's a spirit created for vengeance. Okay? And everything that he's about to unleash Via the, his um his labs, his laboratories. We know the acronyms. I don't want to say them. But them things he's about to unleash on his earth, the Lord is allowing him to do that. Okay? And those are some of the spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In a time of destruction, they pour out their force. We're about to see the, the force of these things, spirits poured out there. All right? Now, like, thought came to my mind again. Hey, I was talking to the um to the elder bro, Prashai, out there. You know, Shalom, my brother, you know what I'm saying? And we was chopping it up. Um, we was talking about how, um, which I seen something on it today. I think they extended it about lifting, um, lifting that, uh, what is it, that that Biden thing, something 24. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. I don't want to use too much time trying to find it. Let me see if I could put in some keywords. Title 24. All right, Biden administration to lift Title uh, no Title Forty Two, um, the P the pandemic border restriction. So I believe they pushed it back. It did it wasn't lifted or it didn't expire. All right. Let me see. Um, I'm looking for a recent one. Forty two. All right. Yeah, Supreme Court blocks Biden from lifting. The Sea Era border restrictions. So he wanted to lift it. Because remember, the border restrictions was set up because of the C-109. Right? But apparently Biden was trying to lift it. But Supreme Court blocked it. Whatever, whatever. Why would Biden try to lift it? See, at the end of the day, all, all this politics is just good cop, bad cop. You know, um, control opposition, blah, blah, blah. You know, why would he try to lift it with a new emerging, so-called emerging thing? You know, so I, I say that to say to just just watch the games. You know, as scriptures say, watch as well as pray or watch and pray. It says, um, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. Be vigilant. Uh, uh, Satan, your adversary, has a roaring lion, go at the bow, seeking whom he may devour. You know, we just watching this. We just scopeoing these devils. You know? So him trying to get them up in here or, you know, lifting this thing up, you know, it's all, it's all funny. It's all questionable, but whatever. Anyway, it says, In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire, hell, and famine, and death, all these were created for vengeance. So, we mentioned that the, the topic at hand is famine. All right, famine is a spirit created for vengeance. And we're about to see the Lord unleash that spirit created for vengeance. But his elect will eat. All right, his elect will eat. His elect will eat in that day. Okay? Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment, and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. And their time is coming. All right, these spirits created for vengeance, their time is coming for them to go all out and do as the Heavenly Father created them to do. And they're going to enjoy it. All right, they're going to enjoy it. So I believe I'm going to end it here. This is the book of 2 Ezra chapter 16 and verse 19. I think I'll start up above. Verse 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings. I think I'll start 17. Woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? Ezra is so bad that Ezra the prophet is saying, woe is me. He's seeing the, the destruction, the calamity, the hell. You know, brothers that, that are, you know, big on having these prophetic dreams and you wake up and sometimes your heart be racing and you be like, you be like so out of it, you want to record it in your mind or you just want to write it down or you want to do a video about it before you forget it and share it with Israel 
Well, Ezra's seeing exactly what the Lord is showing him. And we've seen little glimpses of that to the point where these dreams we had, these visions, I should say, were so realistic that we was like, damn. You know, but the Wadi Haobashim Yaw Shai, like the scripture I opened up with, these things are written for uh, four time for our learning that we through patience and hope may have faith. Or uh, patience and faith may have hope. So, the beginning of sorrow and great mourners, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, all right, all of those I just mentioned are happening. The beginning of powers, excuse me, and the power shall stand in fear in the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils come? We're just going to have faith. We're just going to have faith. Faith. All right? Faith. So behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. I said that earlier, that even with all that's going to happen, Israelites are still going to be wicked. Jake's still going to be wicked. They're not going to repent. They're not going to turn to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They're going to go ahead. They're going to they fall right in line with the sea. You know, BDC system and and get geared up to shoot the MO to the TB up under their skin. You know? Yo, this thing is coming. This thing is coming, bro. This thing is, is coming and it's, it's happening and we right there. We are right there. You know, it's been, what, four years? Oh, this is why, this is why I brought up the Title 42 thing. Um, Because they go, they're getting ready to do something. It's been, since 2019, 2023 is going to be four years. All right, from tw the end of 2019, um, when they, they first started talking about this thing, and then they had the exercise a year later. So, yo, things are speeding up, man. Four years just passed just like that. You know, we got next year. We'll see what happened. I mean, come on, bro. You can't make this up. Time is just going by like that. Before you know, if, if we ain't out of here by then, you got a new president running for uh, office real soon. Just like that. You know, so... Things are speeding up. The Lord said he was going to speed things up for the elect's sake. And things are really speeding up. As it's speeding up, things are getting more intense. Times is getting harder for people, for bro even brothers, the people, our believers. Things are getting tough. But you know what? We got the scriptures as our guidance, you know, as our refuge, as what's holding us down, keeping us mentally stable. So we good. We good, man. We just, <laughs> we here for the ride, man. You know, and the Lord, Lord sent us here to do what we have, do a job. And at the same time, we're here for the ride, man. You know, and the ride is almost over. This bullshit-ass ride called Babylon is almost over. That roller coaster up and down, the, the ups and downs, Satan attack you, you you know, whatever. All that shit is coming to an end. You know what I'm saying? So, so let me um, finish that up. Behold, victory shall be so good chief upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. Even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. For many of them, because people will be confused as all hell. Why is this happening? Screaming, yelling, oh my God, what is happening? I don't like, oh my, man, bro, it's going to be so damn loud out here, bro. You mean neighbor, you're going to hear your neighbors, you know, just yelling, you know, trying to make phone calls, finding out what's going on. People are going to be looking for the most stable individual, the most quietest man in the room or in the area or whatever. People gonna be looking for that person, you know, wondering why, why is he not panicking? I wonder why he's not panicking, you know? Well, the Lord said knowledge and wisdom gonna be the stability of our times, man. You know, so let it happen. Great confusion is coming. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine. And the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So it says it right there that many people are gonna die because of the famine. And this ain't happening yet. This is future prophecy. This is future prophecy. Matter of fact, this is very near future prophecy. Sooner than we think. All right? Sooner than we think. So those that escape the hunger, the famine, the sword is going to kill them. The missiles. All right? Prior to the missiles, you got the actual sword, but then you, the ultimate thing is going to be the nukes. That's what's going to be the icing and cherry on top of this cake. All right? So 23 says, And the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted, and the cities shall be cast down. All right? So, that's that, man. All hell is getting ready to break loose in Babylon the Great. According to as it is written, you know, Lord, Yahweh Shai is about to really turn this, turn this place up. You know, he's about to turn this place up. And, hey, all praises to Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakaq man, for 
you know, for us having this knowledge, this wisdom, this understanding, and hold on to it. The scripture said, hold on to uh, what you have. Keep that which thou has. Let me get it real quick. You know, a closing scripture, I suppose, right? In the book of um, Revelation. It says, um, Revelation verse, uh, excuse me, Revelation 11. Excuse me, Revelation 3 and 11. I'll start 10, actually. He said, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. The whole earth is going to be tempted. All right, mainly via the MO to the TB. And we see how the MO TB is creeping up in here. All right, CBDC. You cannot mention the CBDC without mentioning the MO TB. Okay, them two go right along with each other. And watch and see. Watch and see, man. Prophecy is going to play out. And it's going to be made known who the, who the true men of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai were and are. All right. The true men of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, the ones that were standing stiffly on those names, teaching the word, regardless of the the, the, black, the backlash, you know, the, the good and the bad, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the scriptures, if you may. All right. And just standing, just standing in great boldness, regardless of the people throwing the names of conspiracy nuts and blah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. All right, time is going to show and time is going to tell. So verse 11 says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold thy fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. All right, that no man take thy crown. So hold on to what we got, man. Get down for your crown. Hold on to your crown. That nobody take it. Nobody strip it from you. No nothing. All right, so, you know, spirit, I just wanted to do this lesson. You know, how do you let go and eat? Do you let go and eat? You know, do you let go and eat when that time comes? So with that, I'm gonna give all praise, honor, and glory to you. How about Shem Yahushai, about Shem Kakwadash? All right, double honor to the apostles and shalom to the elect. Shalom.